We come to what is arguably the hardest joint to skin properly, the shoulder joint. The reason is that this joint is articulated in many different ways. The vertices in that area often respond to three or even four bones simultaneously. The key is identifying those bones and applying the proper weights. There are no strict rules or strict values to be used. Skinning, as you have learned so far, is mostly visual and a bit instinctive. First, adjust the animation length to focus on the area of interest. Most of the shoulder animation is taking place between frames 880 and 1160. Obviously, the skinning at this point isn't working too well, but you're about to change that. First, make sure you are in the front view. Press F3 to switch to wireframe mode and take a look at the animation. The shoulder rotates down between frames 880 and 900. However, consider how it rotates up between frames 920 and 940. Much of the work is done by the clavicle, although the shoulder bone does rotate a bit also. In fact, there is even a slight twist of the shoulder bone the higher it rotates. Try it out. Lift your hand above your head and feel the slight twist of the shoulder bone. This is important to get the shoulder vertices to work properly. If you just rotate the shoulder and leave the clavicle untouched, this would result in bad joint animation. Before starting the skinning adjustments, notice the FK and IK bone chains. These won't be used for skinning, as discussed earlier, so you might as well hide them from view at this time, if you haven't done so already. The FK and IK branches for the left arm are easy to select around frame 900. The ones for the character's right arm are a bit harder to select in the viewport. Press H and select them from a list, or zoom in and double-click the respective shoulder bones to select them in the viewport. Hide the selection. Go back to a shaded viewport, F3, select the mesh, and enter Edit Envelopes mode. Let's analyze the situation a little bit. At this time, most of the torso vertices are not affected by any of the clavicle or shoulder bones. This is expected as you set up the upper torso vertices to follow the upper spine bones earlier. As far as blocking out vertices, you may want to make a few last minute adjustments before proceeding. In some situations, as is the case here, Loop selection may not work to your advantage, so make sure you go around the scene so that the right vertices are selected. Assign these vertices to follow the shoulder roll bone 100%. Block out any other rebel vertices in that area. Let's explore the clavicle area. All these vertices need to be somewhat affected by the clavicle bone although by different amounts. The vertices further out need higher percentages than the ones closer to the middle line. Start by selecting the vertices near the bottom end of the collar. Open the Weight Tool dialog. At this point, these vertices are affected only by the spine bone. Select the clavicle bone and weight the vertices by a small value, such as 0.1 or 10%. Select the next few vertices in line. You'll almost certainly need to adjust the back vertices in a moment. For now, work on the front of the character. Use the Weight Tool dialog or the Weighting Script to assign an amount of clavicle influence on the selected vertices. Move on to the next few vertices in line and adjust their weighting. Soon enough, you'll find yourself going back and forth, adjusting vertices as a group, or almost certainly individually. This is where the Weight Script tool comes in handy. As you test the vertices around the shoulder area, you will discover which vertex needs to react to which bone.
you will also find that some vertices, although far from the center line, need a bit of weighting from the spine bone. This helps in grounding them a little bit. Keep on fine-tuning the solution, occasionally glancing at the back of the character. Remember this process is fairly intuitive and requires a great deal of patience. The more experienced you become at this, and the easier it gets. As you go below the armpit, there are a few vertices that need to blend with the arm bones. It's best to blend these with the shoulder bone and not the shoulder roll. You only need for these vertices to react to the up-down motion, not so much the shoulder twist. Keep on fine-tuning the solution. Again, a lot of back and forth is required to get the result that you like. Notice that you're only working on one side of the character. When you're done, you can use mirror skin tools to transfer vertex weights to the other side. However, since you still need to adjust the rest of the arm, hand and fingers, you may as well completely finish with this one side before mirroring the data. Exit edit envelopes mode and save your file.